Hi, folks, and welcome back to EGFC Week 11. I am Waffles for Sid, joining Twin Salty, who has been with you guys already. Twin, how are you doing and feeling going into the last couple matches of the evening? I'm feeling pretty good. You know, we had two three O's, and I have a feeling... Obviously, I hope Montana is going to bring it in this one. I think they have a chance to, but I think UT Arlington, after the loss they had last week, they're going to be aiming for another 3-0 <laughs> in this game today. Yeah, they uh, definitely might be feeling that a little bit since last week. And, you know, Montana is a brand new team here to the league. Um, they actually are brand new as of the uh, halfway through this season mark. And, you know, they're trying to figure out their own place in this uh, in this ranking and settle into a style that they are comfortable with and feeling confident on. Yeah, I think at this point for them, honestly, it's just getting used to the league, getting used to the set map pools, and it's getting comfortable. It's the same thing with Southern Utah that we saw in the last game. Southern right. Utah had a little bit more luck in their first game, and then I think <laughs> this last game against uh, Wichita State for them, it, maybe a little bit of a reality check. And I think for Montana, they've already kind of hit that. So for them here, it's just, you got to play your style, and from there, you just got to see how the, the dice roll. Absolutely, and... You know, Arlington is going to be looking to try and keep a pretty pristine record for themselves in this series. And I want to see some strong fundamentals coming through from them. They've obviously been quite a big competitor in the league in general. Yeah, they've been a huge contender. The only maps they've dropped are to Colorado. They're 24-0 right. in maps other than, uh, and uh, games other than Colorado. So I'm going to try and keep that clean today. Arlington's already set up on the point here. As you can see that, uh, I'm sorry, Montana's already set up on the point. As you can see, Arlington aggressing forward from the high ground. It is Cheval that goes down first as Julian goes forward and gets aggressive, finding another kill onto the main tank. Twin, it's gonna be tough for them now as Arlington continues to fill the kill feed and they're gonna take this first round or first point. They're going to take first capture of the point, especially with Bun Bun getting sent <laughs> into the train tracks. And starting off strong, knowing that they don't need to rush point right away. They have this zombie comp that just seems to never die with so much sustain. And they can just dive from the high ground onto the unsuspecting Grizzlies. And now, stylistically, maybe a little bit hard for Montana to get in here. But if they can pick a target, maybe they can get an early pick. Aggression coming through and a freeze onto Soap. He does manage to survive all the damage coming through, and it is, ooh, Cheval going down in the thick of things. First, once again, Julian has been hunting for him relentlessly on this opening fight, and, well, it is tough to push through when you're already down a man. When you're already down one, it's hard, especially when you have Julian in your back line, just taking out two, the rest of the teammates can take out the rest, and already 44% and counting for UT Arlington and have all six ultimates in play. Whew. And with this, you know, with downtown, it's just so easy to kind of spread the uh, the map out so much. And that's yeah. how UT Arlington's winning it so far. It's going to be tough for Montana to decide where they want to aggress, um, especially with all six ultimates online. They're all grouped up. They all get clipped with the EMP. and. The cleanup was easy for Arlington. As you can see, they have so much synergy right now. So much synergy. All I need to use two alts. So you get the six man EMP from Dez, Julian over the top. There is no defense matrix, nothing from Montana that can stop them. And Montana, yeah, definitely a rough start uh, to their EGF careers, but going around the ro wide rotation now, gonna try and make something out of this as they do have a few ultimates ready, including the Coalescence. Yeah, nice change of pace coming through from the aggression of Montana, keeping it very, very strong. They go ahead and drop the sound barrier, trying to continue forward, but there is so much mitigation coming through from Arlington. There's the blizzard coming through from Loadman. It is now or never if Montana is going to try and take a stand. Couple more cleared off, and that's going to be Arlington taking downtown. Yeah, they take downtown pretty decisively. 100 to 0. Tiki did not even need to use Diva Bomb throughout the entirety of the map. And Promo Rangers used very late. So you see Arlington feeling very comfortable trying to get back after the loss last week. And this was the beautiful six man EMP on top of the Death Blossom. Des knows exactly where they're going to be and just cleans up shop. 
always nice when they uh, when you get a six for six EMP clip there on the whole team. And, you know, Arlington was pretty much ready to follow up with all of that damage. Um, I'm looking forward to see how Montana is going to, you know, treat Sanctuary. It does have a lot of different angles, but I don't feel like there's quite as much oppressive high ground from far away to really take advantage of. Yeah, not too much high ground, but again, this is a map just like downtown where you can really spread it out and try and find those early picks on the targets who are a little, little bit spread out from the rest of their team. And now Arlington trying to push in, going to get delayed by the May wall, but doesn't seem like it's mattering too much. Man, and we can see Julian continuing to throw the damage into Montana as this Reaper. Uh, just relentless. Oh my goodness. This is uh, why some of us supports get a little tilted when Reaper dives our backlines occasionally. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Julian got five out of the six final blows that fight. Jeez. Um, that is just disgusting from them. And Montana seems to be pretty set in this rush comp. They don't, at least so far, have not shown that they're comfortable in anything else. And if this was mecha based, then it'd be a different story. It kind of mm -hmm. leans into that playstyle a little bit. But on Sanctuary and Downtown, it is just so much more of an open battlefield that uh, benefits UT Arlington so much. And they can just hold this mid room without. By Tana being able to do too much. Ooh, the manual hack coming through from Dez is really critical for Arlington. A nice wall to block off the coalescence. Has to go all the way around to try and get the value they're looking for. EMP to follow up right as coalescence is ending. And well, once again, the damage is there from Arlington to follow up. The sound barriers dropped, but wasn't quite enough, Twin. Yeah, not enough that time around. You do force out EMP, but it is at the cost of both of your support ultimates if you're the Grizzlies. And now Julian hiding in the back, going to try and use this Death Blossom soon. Doesn't really have any CC to deny them except for the defense matrix of Jimmy Carter. And now, yeah, they have no ideas there. Oh, man. No one goes down from that, and the sound barrier is dropped from Arlington to help reinforce their attack. Looks like it's going to be plenty as they've sent Montana right back to spawn, and there is only 72% and counting for Arlington. Yeah, already. It, it, UT Arlington is showing why they have not dropped a map to anybody uh, not named Colorado. And just clean, precise, every single execution, every single game plan. Mm -hmm. In Montana, they just can't seem to get their footing quite yet. 90% and counting. They're just going to have to rush point to send us into overtime. With, granted, a few ultimates open. Blizzard thrown on the point to engage from Montana. Does freeze up Tiki. Forces the self-destruct on top of it. There are a lot of ultimates online, and they are being thrown. Arlington going ahead, using the Primal Rage to boot people around. Jimmy Carter trying to do his best to hold the point, but I think that's going to be it. Arlington going to go ahead and take our first map of Busan. Yeah, if you ever hear like, oh, that was pretty decisive. That was pretty clear cut. That is a great example right there. 100-0. 100-0. UT Arlington just looking fantastic as Julian gets the play of the game. Montana had no answers for the Reaper the entirety of this game. Doesn't even need to use the Death Loss if you know they easily could have if they wanted to, but able to get three eliminations and I don't know, this UT Arlington team, it's been pretty well known. They are a playoff contender. They're a championship contender oh, yeah. if they can play their cards <clears throat> right. I think Montana's feeling just the, the blunt force of the frustrations from last week, losing to Colorado for a second time this season. And I think it's just a little bit of an unlucky draw so far for the Grizzlies. Yeah, I definitely agree with you there. Um, obviously, Arlington fresh off a second loss against their, you know, uh, biggest... It's like rivals. Can, yeah, the ri I mean, at least the rival that we have seen from them throughout this entire season and before. And, you know, Montana is in a unique position where they are playing against some really good and experienced players, which obviously always means it's a big growth and learning opportunity. Um, last week when they were playing, um, oh man, I cannot remember. It was remember. Hawaii last week. Was that, no, hey. like, that was two weeks ago. Um, was it two weeks ago? Yeah, because that was the first game of the, that, I, I casted that yeah. game actually. <laughs> so um, I forgot who it was last week, but, you know, Montana was doing a good job at 
knowing their wind conditions, trying to engage on them, and they were mitigating some of the other wind conditions that were being thrown at them. The hard part was all the additional ones after the first and second one get thrown. The third thing that comes through or when that big EMP also slammed them at the end. So um, I definitely think that Montana has got a lot of room to grow, but they're not ones to let your guard down at because this is Overwatch. If you do that, you'll lose the point fast. <laughs> yeah, we've seen teams come back out of nowhere time and time again. Uh, and it was Tennessee last week that they lost there, to, which you. a very rough schedule. And you're in a very rough division. You have yeah. Hawaii, you have Tennessee. Uh, I think they play Wichita State later on in the season, who are now, oh I think, seven and three. You have Arlington <laughs> today. It is not an easy draw if you are Montana, but you got to make the best be of it. I think. Into the league and to draw into that? Jeez, twin. It's, Ouch. <laughs> it's rough. It is not an easy draw by any means but as you said they at least have win conditions that they set they know they have an idea of what the opposing team is going to run i think for right. them it's just been putting it into action and we'll see here on numbani they have double shield with the torb coming out maybe trying to deal with some of that dive coming in uh from the winston of arlington yeah, or the, oh man, I don't know how they're gonna handle some of. Okay, Julian switched off the ash. I was a little concerned on the ash there because that's a lot of damage potential coming through, and Colby has been hard pocketing these DPS on Arlington over the last couple weeks. But we see the tracer here. A lot of nice uh, pepper damage gonna be coming through, and Dez has already started the assault up the front gates. Essentially, got the pocket from the damage boost. And, well, we all know how devastating the stickies and uh, focus beam combo can be. Julian goes down to Bohemian? Bloodthirsty uh -oh. support. They get the kill in the end. And, well, that does put Arlington behind one player for this first push. Montana holding strong on the point. Two more kills coming through for them. And uh, that's going to be Arlington going back to spawn. Yeah, and some subs that came in for Montana as well. Maybe that's making the difference here. Is Lord been able to get a hmm. few picks? And you see Arlington have to back up. Maybe like, okay, you know, they're not playing around. We still need to play our game. And soap tastes okay. You know, they had the right idea with the dives, but just couldn't get back up to put enough pressure on the back line. And as we see, obviously not enough pressure. Bohemian Ooh. takes out the tracer, which is <laughs> definitely not something you see every day. Yeah, I think uh, definitely put Bohemian showed that you have to respect them. And, uh, well, Dez is trying to take down this turret. Does go ahead and pop the duplicate on Mercy. Uh, so we got a support DPS coming through. Going ahead, keeping everyone alive. Love the change of pace. Valk's going to keep everyone topped off on top of it. And so much engagement came through after that. Yeah, just the, the engagement was on point. UT Arlington knew exactly what they had to do. And this time the dive works out. And there's not really any CC from Montana. I think that's where what well, UT Arlington realized, like, oh, they don't have a Brig. They don't really have an Ana for sleeps. All they really have is the accretion from Jimmy Carter. Mm -hmm. So they can dive a little bit more loosely, more freely, because they don't have to worry about getting rocked or getting slept as much. So right. now as they can continue pushing forward, you know, that's definitely something they keep in mind. This, or Julian here on the Hanzo almost has the dragons online as well, so that'll be able to split the team up if he needs. We see the Cheval here on this Torb trying to stay alive with his life, but there it is, Julian on the Hanzo looking for some prey or maybe looking for some dragon food. Moving around here through the main, continuing to put the pressure onto Montana. Nice shots coming through, even though the res is successful onto Bun Bun. Soap is rezzed in the back line as well, but Twin, Arlington is just continuing to push Montana back and Montana can't quite seem to regain their balance. Yeah, and definitely the Molten Core being used there, not ideal either. Let's see if Cheval is swapping. I'm guessing they might be because then they use Molten Core. Yeah, they're gonna be going nice. over to the Cassidy to try and deal with Dez, which is the right call. Dez has been a, quite a menace in the air for UT Arlington up to this point. It also adds some CC into the mix, but yeah, you can tell you guys like, all right, we can change it up a little bit and still try and dominate. This is wow. Ambitious. He threw a volley, or he Des he threw a volley of stickies 
chasing the dragons. Man, I feel so bad for the for Montana clipping all that damage. <laughs> yeah, Montana's like, we're just trying to walk out of spawn, and all of a sudden, oh, you get stickies to the face, you get a dragon strike, they used grab Ooh. as well. Man. Into that corner, and now it's gonna go the opposite way and get met with a duplicate. Right, and with this whole hog straight in their face, right out of spawn, there's nowhere to go, and we all know it's tough being pushed against the wall. Round one's gonna get completed with 418 left on the clock. Yeah, you don't see it very often where time, when this uh, graphic comes up, gets added to the time remaining. Um, that's when you can tell if you're Arlington, you had quite a push. And that was even with you losing that first fight from there. It was all gas and a learning experience from Montana. I think this game is going to be on what the top teams of this league can do because Arlington, they obviously know Montana's a new team, joined us during the spring split. Uh, they are not holding back in any way, shape or form. Well, and I all I appreciate the fact that Arlington is still keeping this a serious and competitive match for themselves, right? I think that it's a little bit too often we see some of the uh, more silly strategies come out that don't actually improve any of the fundamentals or synergy. Don't get me wrong. I think a TP strat and sometimes the Bastion Bunker may be the surprise you need to beat the other team. Sometimes that is what you have to do when they only have one push, right? And trick plays are needed, but there is a point where we're keeping it classy and competitive and Arlington has continued to do just that. And I love it. Yeah, I'm, as you said, very glad they're just playing like they normally do. They're not gonna, mm -hmm. you know, off roll. They're not gonna put any disrespect to their opponents. They're gonna try and play it out like it's any other team because it is good practice for your comms and for some of these yeah. set plays then maybe you could try a new strat out. And Julian already in the back, gonna try and get an early mm -hmm. pickoff. Let's see if Montana sees them and they'll be able to kind of make Julian at least think twice about diving fully in. Last time he tried to do this, he got punished for it. Almost went down again, but does manage to come back and get the kill onto Bohemian in the end. So paying off right there with the Zippy Tracer. Still more damage coming through and gets, the, gets another final blow onto Loadman. Does fall very low and, well, no worries there. The rest of Arlington is backing him up and going to hold this defensive point. Yeah, gonna continue holding on. And as you said, I would love to see maybe a new strat come up from Montana. Maybe a Sim TB. Maybe, I don't know, maybe pull out the far end echo like we saw in the previous game from Wichita State. Like, mm. why not throw something at the wall? Even if it doesn't work, oh well. Like, you throw something at the wall that could work, and you also get good practice on a good comp. What a sleep that is from Super Jeez. used to delay this a little bit. Pulse Bomb, gonna get some good damage in. That's about it as Montana. Gonna make the rotation yet again. Tracer just continuing to be a pester and I mean, essentially a little mosquito or gnat oh. putting so much damage into Montana. Nice anti comes through, does manage to clip the main tank over, over tank uh, on Montana. Arlington can't quite get the kill, but Loadman has gone down. Now they're down a few people and I like that they took this long route all the way across, trying up some new things, does manage to push Arlington off the high ground and have the high ground themselves. Their soap goes ahead, goes for that dive and Bohemian does go down as a result. The damage from Dez is so much follow-up and Arlington does manage to hold the point once again. Yeah, they do manage to hold, but I like, as you said, I like the idea from the Grizzlies. It, when you're running this Reinhardt, it isn't ideal on this new body attack, but when you can get them rotating all the way around, you force the supports off of that opposing high ground, it at least forces Arlington to adapt and counter what you are doing instead of you guys always having to play reactively. Which again, it's a step in the right direction. Did it work out that time? No. But this time, they go to the near high ground and may try the same thing again. Man, that focus beam was shred. I mean, it shredded load man, but it's actually the anti from Super Juice that really prevented Montana from getting as aggressive as they were wanting. As soon as you're anti, you cannot play nearly as aggressive as you want, and they have been on point from Super Juice. Yeah, Ooh, they've been stick. on point. Ooh, pulse goes down. Julia will be to be determined if they can get oh out of this. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so they're going to be able to as they Man. somehow squeak through, and yeah, going to be able that to is... clean it up from there. 
I mean, squeak through is a great definition of that. I don't know how he made it out alive. I don't have jukes like that in my arsenal. <laughs> I know. I honestly, it's like playing a hole in the wall. Like you just kind of <laughs> whistle your way through the opposing members of Montana and somehow get out, <laughs> even when you get the pulse bomb off. Bob uh, and Wee. Tiki, flank grab coming up. Nanode, here comes the grab. Sound barrier is thrown by Bun Bun to keep the rest of the team alive. Nice pin comes through, is bubbled in the end, but Tiki goes down as a result. Nice speed boost for, from Bun Bun on top of it. More damage being put out, this time from Julian. Does take down Overtank in the process, but it is not over yet for Montana's push. They're still trying to aggress forward. Oh, they did lose one more, and with Dez's self-destruct taking out Bohemian, they are just looking rough. It is going to be an uphill battle. Death Blossom does try to find a bit of value, but not quite enough. Still Baby Diva on the point, but Twin, it is going to be Arlington looking like they hold strong and, well, taking Numbani. They're going to take Numbani 3-0. Oh, Grizzlies, though, showing some fight on the second half of that, which you love to see at least. Showing that, all right, we're going to throw some different things at you. We're going to see how it works. And it almost did work a few times there, but Arlington... It just seems like the DPS especially really lifting them just to another degree. As Soap Taste, okay, play the game, able to get a few on, able to get the D.Va off of the map as well. You see the D.Va bomb, just for a little extra flavor at the end. But UT Arlington, yeah, they're just playing near perfect Overwatch. Yes, they're maybe getting a little mm -hmm. bit sloppy on some of these defenses. They're at least adapting well, though, and I think for Montana, heading to Hanamura, you can maybe run a double shield with a sim. You can throw something else at the wall that Arlington has not seen quite yet in this matchup, which leaves a little bit of hope for them to maybe even get a draw out of map three. But yeah, it's, it's not looking great for the Grizzlies so far. No, but like we've mentioned before, Arlington is one nasty opponent to be going up against. So... I think, you know, regardless of all of that, you said throw things on the wall, see what sticks. And yeah, they did bring that fight you were talking about, but they also brought that variance. You know, it's so, unfortunately, we see it a little bit too often, right? Where they just continue to use the same path over and over and over. And yes, ideally that is a good path for your composition. And we know that there might be a bit of strategy around there. But at some point, maybe a little variance and unpredictability might help throw, you know, change the game up some. Uh, and Montana was doing exactly that with their different approaches and, um, you know, all in all had some successful moments. And I think they're definitely going to be a team to watch develop and grow because they're not far from really refining a lot of those skills. I think for them right now, it is, you can tell, they're very favorable on the rush. They love having the Ryan with the Diva, or sometimes right. the Zarya <laughs> and the Lucio Moira. If they can maybe learn, like, double shield, we'll have to see if they can have it here on Hanamura. It's a good right. place for them to run it on defense. Or even maybe like a double shield, I mean, double bubble, or right. a dive. Like, if you could throw at least a different comp at them as well, that mm -hmm. makes them even think that extra degree. You're making the opponent adapt to that nth degree where it's not like, all right, they're going to run the Reinhardt with the Lucio, Moira, Diva. Their DPS may change, but that's it. You can right. throw that extra level of variance at them. Maybe something else is going to stick, and then you can get the snowball going. Yeah, and it's going to be tough for Montana as, you know, they continue to move through this season. And, you know, maybe we will see, their, see them expand their arsenal and see those new changes and all of that. But... We're only in week three of the newest season, of the spring season. So, you know, we'll see how it all plays out. There's plenty of room for, you know, our underdogs to come through. Or, you know, sometimes you're just playing the game and boom, it clicks. And you're like, oh, I've been doing this wrong the whole time. I don't know why I was doing it that wrong. And now I'm suddenly much better. Not not much better for me, but some <laughs> these guys have more breakthroughs like that for sure. <laughs> uh, say, but, uh, I, I definitely don't have that for my playing career either. Um, but you know, you just never know. It seems the weirdest moments it can click, and we've right. seen it time and time again. And uh, you never know. Maybe Hanamura is the perfect spot for the Grizzlies of all places 
to try and get it going here to maybe try and build some momentum even if honestly if they cap first point or they hold for a good amount of time it is progress that you did not make on the previous two maps Absolutely. and you take the small wins it helps recover the mental a little bit and then it, you just keep going up the ladder here of what we can do you gotta make sure you're looking at both positives and the negatives and well, knowing when you're going up against a high class team means that you are going to have a big opportunity to really be lifted to playing at their level as well, right? You've, there's been some times, I, in my experience when I was playing water polo back in the day, sometimes when you go against a team, you're like, oh, we know they're a little bit weaker you don't play as well because you're not as ready. And Arlington has been doing a great job at playing well. And I think that's good for that's good to force Montana to also have to play to that level. Yeah, hundred percent. UTA is like, all right, we're gonna play at the exact same level we've played at throughout uh, the eleven weeks here. And you guys have to try and match that. And they're running the teleport with the Bastion. Probably going to go up on top left or straight to point. We'll have to wait and see. Here we go. Right straight to point. To point. No, no skirting around. No alternate routes. Bastion set up here in the corner. Already has the ammo. Oh my gosh. Absolutely nasty. Montana was not ready for such a speedy and aggressive push straight onto the point. Yeah, I, I had a feeling Montana was going to maybe throw out something like this on their attack. I did not think my I mean, Arlington was going to. They are already got the TP set up on left side, already getting ready. You can see the silhouettes of Montana in the background. They're setting up on that opposite high ground. Yeah. This could wow. get bad. And Arlington was doing a great job at anticipating this transition. They were already here before the point was essentially capped. Great plays coming through, but Montana looks like they have a chance here to hold strong. They get a couple of kills and they do have the spawn advantage. Arlington now taking out the last couple members as, oh, Bun Bun does go down in the end. Oh, two walls, one with the Emirates, one with the Ant Matrix and one of the Sim wall. It's gonna be tough for Arlington, or I'm sorry, for Montana to push out and there's no way they can get any damage even trying to leave the spawn. Man, that was ruthless from Arlington. Ruthless and near <laughs> perfect. Um, that may be up there for the record of the fastest time on Hanamura in EGF history. I'm not sure that might be. what the record was, but you don't normally <laughs> add a minute 40 almost onto the time bank. So that is ridiculously impressive. You don't see the... I mean, you see, so you see the Sim TP teleporter on the far side to get to the second, second point, but you don't typically see them all push forward quite that fast, right? Usually it's not until about, I don't know, four or five seconds after the points fully capped that I feel like the aggression starts to come through that side choke onto the second checkpoint. They had just finished capping and then boom, we're aggressing onto the second checkpoint right away, knowing their supports would catch up in time. Yeah, it was just like, all right, you know, we can set up in Montana as we saw the silhouettes did not expect them to teleport right there, right away. They were maybe expecting them to go top right and maybe teleport on top of point. Mm -hmm. Um, but it just didn't end up rolling that way. And it just once you get that uh, snowball rolling on that kind of comp, it's just so hard to stop. Montana's going to try to replicate that now as they're running the Symmetra in the Bastion. I wonder if UT Arlington will expect them trying to match this or if they're expecting a normal rush comp. We'll kind of have to wait and see as Montana get ready for the TP. How are they going to react once they make it through this choke point or at least, uh, you know, see what, what Arlington is set up as? So far, they already went ahead and TP'd on the point, but not too many of them have made it through. Everyone from Montana got clipped out by Arlington, and, well, Arlington's going to go ahead and hold strong for the first push. Yeah, and they teleported above point, which I think is a good idea, because you have a feeling Arlington might expect you to teleport straight to point. Right. And maybe it was just a miscommunication of when they were going to drop or if they were going to rotate around, but... Oiva Tank drops almost immediately after they get through and they just get absolutely melted because they're the only one there and then they kind of just trickle down and at that point it's like shooting fish in a barrel for Arlington right. is now 
They're just gonna go for high damage. Junkrat Soldier, try breaking those shields. Ooh. And Oivatek, sadly for them, will get their shield broken and sent back to spawn quicker than that. Yeah, and you know, you mentioned earlier how, uh, what was it, Overtank was the only one there oh? on the point when they first made it through. Not ever words you want to hear in Overwatch, but there's a bit of a turnaround coming through, Twin. They got a couple of kills onto Arlington, and I mean, they're going to be at a bit of a spawn advantage walking back. Yeah, they took down, I mean, I think it was Lodman took down two, Jimmy Carter took down mm -hmm. one. If they can regroup here in the next few seconds, yeah, they'll have... The man advantage is kind of have to wait and see if they can push in in time or not, or if the pressure from Colby and Dez is going to be too much. Yeah, these DPS on Arlington have just been on a point, and well, they've been getting all the heal pockets in the world. High noon from the high ground, a shield comes through protecting himself, and with both supports off the table for Montana, there's not going to be any sustainability coming through. Yeah, and at that point, yeah, just. Honestly, yeah. a good call from Montana. Nice you just got to reset. Yeah. You don't want to give all charts to Arlington. You don't want to waste any more time right. that you just don't have at this point. Um, but yeah, just what a perfect dead eye. And the shield, I at first I couldn't tell. I forgot that Montana did not have a Sigma. I thought it was a Sigma shield for Montana. Instead, no, it's right. <laughs> Tiki shield protecting his Cassidy up there. Right. And yeah, just perfect teamwork. And it's so nice to see. I definitely thought that was the opposing block for a moment as oh. well. Tiki went ahead, slammed two people on the ground. And well, that is a beautiful combination from Arlington coming through with only 113 left on the clock. Yeah, time's ticking now for Montana to get out of this point. Julian waiting in the back. That orb actually may give his position away. Not quite yet. I don't think... <laughs> Montana realized it. Oh, yeah, I don't think they ever did. He could have stayed there if he wanted to, but instead, going to retreat, and Montana now are going to try and initiate with his coalescence. Ooh, tough to walk through. The floor is lava currently. Loadman tried to jump all the way over it, but gets shot down in the air. Arlington here holding this strong top point, and they're going to need to, or Montana's going to need to do a soft regroup here if they want one last chance to push in. Yeah, going to just try and force everything that they have into this next fight. Got to take a little bit longer though, Cheval taking out. Gonna have the res though, so they'll have that res for OT when we get there. And now, can this Riptire get any value? Trance is committed here from Colby and Bun Bun goes down to the Deadeye once again. That's devastating for Montana as more people are flooding the kill feed. There is a kill onto Super Juice here, but I don't think that's going to be enough. Arlington continuing to handle the members of Montana flooding onto the point, and that's going to be them taking the series with a nice 3 0 perfect win. It's exactly what you want to see if you're Arlington, because as we said, sometimes teams will slack off a little bit in these. Right. And you want to see them, in a way, show that, okay, we're a team, we know exactly where we should be in the standings, and this is how well we play, and great teamwork there. The halt, the flux on top of it. Woo. It was just amazing from UT Arlington, and it's exactly what you want to see from Arlington. Montana... It's just back to the drawing board. You at least showed good signs of trying to adapt mid-game. And you just got to take those little learning steps. A great VOD to go over and practice this week. And honestly, you're new to the league. You just got to take those steps at this point and try and build a resume. Absolutely. And, you know, continue to refine those fundamentals and the different compositions that you expand on to get more comfortable on and... You know, hopefully they have one of those aha moments we talked about, maybe during VOD review. That's typically where mine resulted, where I was like, oh, what I think I'm doing? Video evidence. Mm, mm. Not the same. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, yeah, maybe, maybe you shouldn't do this weird flank in the back that, you know, very uh, yeah. un and not just a good idea. Yeah. Uh, but we'll have an interview hopefully soon with UT Arlington for them to talk about tonight's match. And I bet maybe we'll talk about last week and going into next week as well. So make sure you stay with us. We'll be back with somebody from UT Arlington for an interview in just a minute.
folks, and welcome back to EGFC Week 11. We are here with Tiki from UT Arlington, the victorious team of our previous match. Tiki, welcome and thank you so much for joining us today. Thank y'all for having me. So how are you guys feeling coming through? You know, you just got off the third week of the spring season. So mm -hmm. what's kind of the team's general mindset moving forward or just around the season in general uh so going into this uh semester we are a pretty new team tank tank line wise uh last semester i was on main tank and uh we brought in soap so i would move to off tank right um and so it's it's a bit different we're still pretty much the same core so we have pretty much the same uh feel to our team of we're just playing week by week to you know go far um but it's from our previous matches you could probably see that it's taking a little bit to get into our like rhythm mm -hmm. especially against colorado we had a, a rough time <laughs> but um yeah it's i don't think our attitude towards anything has changed really nice well that's always really good to hear what has it been um what has it been like you know still being on the team and you know what's it kind of give us a glimpse into being on an esports collegiate team um it's actually probably my favorite part about college right now <laughs> there you um, go <laughs> it's it's actually really fun uh as you can see we have a esports facility now on campus uh, i'm the only one here because it's i don't have a pc right now and uh winter stuff so other people couldn't show up but uh it's it definitely ha it brings a lot more of a feel when we can play in person with each other um and that's probably what has been my favorite thing compared to being on a collegiate team compared to like being off of like a, a random team for a different tournament or something right it's definitely a different experience when you know you see the massive diva bomb go off and you all turn to look at each other right <laughs> yeah <laughs> twin what's on your mind um, so I got a question about last week. Obviously, as you said, not the way you guys wanted last week to go, uh, losing to a Colorado good game, though. one It was a good game, and how did you guys kind of go at it this week as knowing, okay, you fell short last week, plenty of stuff to work on, so how, what was the mindset going into this week because of that last result? Uh, honestly, it's just get better. Um, last week, we, we noticed some issues, especially with, like, my play, uh, since I've been playing main tank for a while, I... I was playing off tank like a main tank um and so i wasn't like adjusting to adjusting how i should as an off tank and uh there's some communication problems that's just growing pains that's the second week of us having this tank line so uh we just kind of shrugged it off we got some uh some coaching on the side and we got better um and we i felt a lot more a lot better in this game and a little bit of our past scrims too since Colorado. But yeah, we're looking forward to uh, hopefully seeing them again. And yeah, next week you guys have a great game against Tennessee, who is very close to you guys in the standings. How are you guys looking at that one? As it's a huge game for both programs. Uh, I think we, we're looking at it as just a regular game. Uh, we're, we're definitely wanting to show our best as the two teams that we played before this, it was Wichita State and uh, Colorado. Neither of those games really went how we wanted. Um, we definitely think that we're like one of the best teams in this league, so we want to be able to show it. 100%. And I guess before we let you go tonight, anybody you want to shout out, your teammates, your family, your friends, uh, anybody in particular? Uh, shout out to... Um, our old uh, esports uh, manager who's moved to a different school. But uh, Drew, he's done so much for this program. I, I can't thank him enough for what he's done. Uh, my teammates for giving me this opportunity uh, to play and all that. All my parents, my parents watching. And um, I guess that's it. Nice. Well, thank you once again for joining us, Tiki. And of course, best of luck to you and to your team on the rest of the season or the season games. 
Uh, we'll see you around the block probably here and there. So good luck and uh, we will catch you around. Folks. Oh, sorry about that, folks. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Don't go anywhere. We still have another great match coming up. This one between two teams we have mentioned before in the previous game of University of Tennessee versus University of Colorado. And uh, Twin, these are some pretty high standing teams here in the league. <laughs> Yeah, some heavy hitters. You know, Colorado, last undefeated team left. That's and, true. And I think the only maps they've dropped were against this UT Arlington team. So curious to see what happens tonight against a very hungry Tennessee team. Absolutely. Folks, we will see you on the other side, so don't go anywhere.